That is six million years ago. And that is the common ancestor of chimpanzees and bonobos and humans. That is about seven million years ago, and that is the common ancestor of all those and gorillas. That's about 12 million years ago, and that's the common ancestor of all those and orangutans. Orangutans, as you know, are Asian apes. Gorillas, humans, bonobos, and chimpanzees are African apes. Darwin conjectured long before there were any available fossils, long before there were any available fossils, long before there were any available fossils, that the right place to look for human fossils was Africa, and he worked that out by pointing out that humans most resemble the other African apes. basically based on this whole thing to cover up the history of the black man he basically put this whole shit about the apes thing which is the standard for all um academia in the western hemisphere in the western uh in western education so that means even when even charles clinch in his book even when they had to go and deal with the stuff in the Afrocentric thing, they talking about that homo habilis and homo erectus and all that shit. That shit ain't got nothing to do with us. Well, some people say, well, they got all these bones. How can you say this stuff don't have anything to do with us? I'm not saying that these particular bones and all that kind of stuff didn't exist. I'm just saying it don't have shit to do with us. <laughs> <laughs> so Charles Darwin is correct in one aspect. This has something to do with the white man. But it don't have nothing to do with us. That's the key. His history is not our history. You know, at one time before we knew stuff and all, now that you was real, real religious, you thought that all people... Do we really believe that all the people on the earth were placed in one geographical location and then all of a sudden something or someone told them, travel out. And in their travels, they became different colors, different textures, different hues. Or can we understand that the planet, the original man is on the whole planet. Everywhere you go, you see people of color. I don't give a fuck. The motherfucking Eskimo is a nigga. And he in the coldest region there is. So we ain't even going to get off into, oh, well, the climate made the skin color change and this and that. Because that's foolishness. We know what made the skin color change and the textures change and all of that. It had nothing to do with no goddamn location. I am the death machine. Shall we have some Adolf? Definitely not. On your way, on your way, Moberg. Hey, we're expecting guests. Well, I thought you said he was writing a book. Said I was writing an essay, and it requires some shut mouth. Uh, don't waste your time on those junkyard losers. This country was built on genocide and slavery. We killed all the black guys that were here, and then, and then we shipped in new black guys of our own. And then we brought in Jesus like a bar of soap. Let's go. This country was built on genocide and slavery. We killed all the black guys that were here, and then, and then we shipped in new black guys of our own. And then we brought in Jesus like a bar of soap. Let's go. You know it. I am the religious correspondent. Fuck off with your Jesus beliefs. If the Bible's God's book, why didn't he give it to everyone? Just the point, Pop. Black people in America have been cut off from their homeland for so long, they don't even know the names of their ancestors. My ancestor's name was Sanford. My father's name was Sanford. His father's name was Sanford. His father's father and their father. We all been Sanford. And I've only been cut off in my homeland a little over 30 years. <laughs> and I suppose that's when your ancestors left Africa, huh? No, that's when I left St. Louis. Stay <laughs> home and not. Well, we just had to tie a bell to his paw so the gals can hear him coming. <laughs> <coughs> oh, you Jay. That's right, Daddy. Oh, you was thin bones of spare when I left. That's <laughs> let the doctor come by you? Master Frederick won't pay for no doctor. He says we need to use our own ways. I don't need to see a doctor, Daddy. Feel strong every day. And this is Irene. We're 
Tom's first baby. The Cherokee hair. You don't seem so high strung, I should say. And you don't seem so foolish. And no account. Like my Tom says. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Tom? Why ain't he standing by you with that big belly? Matthew Murray says Tom is the best blacksmith in Carolina. Rents him out all over the state. Helps Mass Murray build his guns. Gets paid, too. Saving to buy his free. A slave never can't pay no. The Georgia Peach, too. Oh, yeah, the Georgia Peach, too. How do you find time to do both? Uh, <laughs> well, incredible. you know, uh, I'm from Macon, Georgia. I'm yeah. from there. James Brown is from there. Uh, Otis Redden is from there. And Wayne Cochran is from there. I was the best looking one to leave, so I left first. <laughs> so that makes me the best looking one. Oh, you silly. <laughs> well, we, uh, I, I, I think we... something before you go from me. It's something I've always wanted to do all my life. Uh-oh. And uh, oh, all, all of my life, I've always wanted to do this. I've always just wanted to host a show. Host a show? I've been in the business so long, and I'm the only Indian in the business today. How do you mean the only Indian? The yeah. only Indian. The other one that you had out here, he's not in the business. He's a stuntman. Be something you're not. Oh, God, I can't stand this. Trying to be something I'm not? Trying to be proud of my African heritage? That's being something I'm not, then fine. I'd rather be dead than be like you. Stuck-up nigger who's ashamed of being black. My grandmother was a full-blooded Iroquois. My grandfather was a black from a long line of journeymen who lived in Connecticut since the establishment of the colonies. My father was a Bajan who came to this country a cabin boy in a merchant marina. I know all of that, Mama. I only drink this water. That's the only thing I drink. Really? Yeah. Because you, you what? You had a drinking problem for a while or something? Uh, well, it wasn't really. It just no. the Indians don't really get too along with the fire water, and you know. Are right. you an Indian? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, I, I thought you were know. a black guy. Hey. You're Indian? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. You yeah. gotta what be kidding me. What kind of Indian are you? Like Tonto Indian? Sh uh, Shinnecock Indian. Really? You're Shinnecock? Yes. Oh, I didn't know you were Shinnecock. <laughs> you could have fooled me. That's the kind I am. Hey. <laughs> so you should be Big Chief Bastard, not Old Dirty. <laughs> he, his family was here when Columbus landed, huh? Is that yes. right? Yes. So you are not a black man, you're an Indian? I'm an Indian. No kidding. Yeah. I, now, this is a shock. We are learning more today. Hey, you look totally black. Uh, yeah, I was definitely you know, Indian. Wow. Definitely. <laughs> Are you a foe, you right brothers? The Indian is old man had entered the white man, my grandfather. Step up and get knocked right the fuck out. Come to the cookout, dirty bitch at the mouth. You scared, run around like the plane about to crash. First off, let me take issue with the title of African American. We're Americans. And the blacks that currently reside in the United States of America are not from Africa. Those sorts of terms that society has come to use are divisive. 100 years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Now, have you ever wondered what that passage meant from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech? I did, and what I found was... One of the biggest secrets that's not really a secret at all, except to many African Americans, is they are not descended from Africans. <laughs> I know, I was shocked too, so much so that I asked Africans, and they agreed African Americans weren't Africans. If you don't believe me, Google Arnaldus Montanus America and see the people he saw in 1671. Read books like The Black American Handbook for Survival through the 21st century by Raydine Amon-Ra, What Every African American Should Know by Carrie Davis, and Africans and Native Americans by Jack Forbes. <laughs> I just can't believe schools aren't teaching this stuff. What a teacher. Now the Europeans have a dilemma because they've lied to us so much and we have forgotten so much that if they stand up to tell us the truth, would we believe them? 
the majority of the people who call themselves African American right now, if you tell them they're not from Africa, they'll give you hell. Am I right? Yes, we are. <laughs> now, can you imagine they're getting, you're getting that feedback from them. Can you imagine what they would say to a European who now try to tell them they're not from Africa? And they, they came up with the term um, colored. And that was another big umbrella to sweep all the Indian people on. Anything so they wouldn't have to put the word Indian in the record books. So what they couldn't accomplish with the torch and the gun, they hope to accomplish with the stroke of the pen. And it's for that reason, I reject totally the label of black Indian, because I've seen people use that term. I've seen some of our own people use it themselves, but usually it's an externally applied term. And uh, I reject that totally, as long as there are blonde-headed Mohawks and blue-eyed Cherokees who are not identified as Euro-Indians, why should any Indian that has any black ancestry be identified as a black Indian? What's good for the goose has to be good for the gander, but it's just a reflection of the racism that's in this society in general. You spoke about the tribe being detribalized in 1881, when one of the main chiefs at the time was Bristol Michael, who was my fourth great-grandfather. So my personal journey has been my fourth great-grandfather being chief of the tribe when they get detribalized, me coming across his death certificate, which has him listed as colored, no longer Indian, but colored, down to me, who was not only listed as African-American, but who has never been allowed to be on the federally recognized roles. So I'm wondering if anyone could speak or would be willing to, brave enough to speak about the ongoing impact that these classifications are still having on our people today, especially in terms of causing disunity, because Narragansett, Picasso, Poconoket, these are all peoples, but then amongst our own peoples you get, well, you're not federally recognized, so you're not a real Indian, that sort of stuff going on. Tell us about history, but do they tell us about the whole history, about the real history, about the true history? Yeah. You know, simple things. How many people know that the Declaration of Independence of the United States comes from the Iroquois Confederacy? Mm. I didn't know that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Little quick type of things. The Iroquois Confederacy met, and they started off their meeting, and a scribe was there because they liked the way he wrote. He was a scribe for Benjamin Franklin, and Benjamin Franklin was there. And they started off their meeting with, we, the people, have gathered here. Does that sound familiar? That sounds very familiar. 